Welcome to the Professor Slots Podcast. You know how you put a lot of time and energy into your slots play for not nearly enough wins? Yeah, I get it. I'm here to help you change that. If you're trying to accelerate your slots momentum, become more profitable, and win more than ever before, today's episode will help you move forward with confidence. And now to help you with over a decade of experience working with slots enthusiasts just like you, here's Dr. John Friedel, also known as Professor Slots. Hello, slots enthusiasts. It's great to hang out with you again for another Professor Slots podcast episode I do every few days, except recently, to help you improve your slots performance, leaving with your winnings, and ultimately change your life for the better. And hopefully I'm going to change your life a little bit today so you can visit your casino and play slots smarter. And sometimes the best way we can do that to change slots enthusiasts' lives for the better is when they enter a business relationship with us. They become a client, they buy our online courses, they start getting coaching from us, whatever the case may be, because you have ways to take advantage of your casino, which allows you to impact how much you win and then leave with your winnings. In case you missed it on my last episode, I went over top 10 ways to know a slot machine is hot or cold, the Illinois slots industry, and provided a Q&A session from one of my past live streams. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Today's episode number 187 includes a review of the slots industry in Iowa later in the episode, followed by a Q&A session from a prior live stream. But I'll begin for you today with why your emotions matter to winning at slots. How do you feel when you visit a casino? What's the state of your emotions? As another winning slot strategy, let's talk about why your emotions matter when you visit a casino. Do your emotions change while you're at the casino? Do you start feeling different and then what? Do you then win or lose? Or do you win first, then your emotions take over and not for the better? Meaning you deviate from your plan and then chase wins or do something else that ends up spending your winnings. You know that's the whole plan of the casino, right? Let's say you're driving to the casino, cruising along, minding your own business, and someone cuts you off. How rude. But life goes on, only now you're a bit agitated. When I was a teenager, my father went on a vacation to Germany with his mother and sisters. I remember my mother and I dropping them off at Detroit Metro Airport. I didn't see what happened when our car was cut off, but there was a lot of angry voices. And a week later, they returned still angry. Their emotions ruined the trip for them. To this day, my father will still get upset about it. I hope he's not listening to this as I don't want to upset him now all these years later. This family example may seem a bit extreme, but it can be hard to get back to the proper frame of mind after something happens which disturbs us, whatever the cause. Our attitude matters when we are trying to focus. If you think slot machines are fully luck-based, then nothing we do can matter. I've repeatedly shown you return statistics from casinos reported to their states showing slots are not fully random. That state data couldn't be clearer, so our intent, our focus, our decisions, and choices matter to winning at slots. But sometimes emotions get in the way of winning. Which emotions help and which hurt our winning at slots? Well, isn't that a great question? We have got to talking about this the other night in my membership community. A member shared that lately he's only been winning at slots when he's tired, hungry, and a little upset, usually around 2 a.m., under those conditions, for him, he's winning hand pay after hand pay, and not winning hand pays at other times he's at the casino. But is it luck, strategy, or attitude? Has that happened to you, or are you the opposite, where unpleasant traffic while driving to the casino results in an emotionally charged state which gets in the way of winning? Either are your emotions, and your emotions matter. Why? Because slots aren't fully random, so our choices matter to winning and losing. The next time you walk into a casino, I challenge you to write down or record your emotional state. Do this for six visits. For some, that may be over a week, and for others, it might be over a year. After doing this six times, compare your emotional state to how much you won or lost on that casino trip. Which emotional state is better for you? This challenge is a winning slot strategy. For me, I was visiting Horseshoe Cincinnati every month or two in the first year it opened playing low-limit machines on the same game theme I'd won on in Iowa 10 years before. I'd bring in a $500 bankroll and leave when it was half gone. My emotional attitude was focused and clear, kind of like how I get when I work on math problems. Analytical. Watchful. And then after a dozen visits in November, I won a hand pay for $3,750. With it, I got back everything I'd spent at slots for the year and made that much in profit. And thinking about it, I decided to get angry. Well, not angry exactly. Passionate. I decided to care. 
Why? Because after nine months, I only had a $2,000 profit. I told myself, not good enough. Well, long story short, I started caring more, working harder, and ending up with seven hand pays that day in the middle of November, and 54 hand pays by the end of the year, and 90 hand pays in the next nine months, plus winning a car at the end of it. That's when I started writing my book, Learning to Win. What's the right emotional state for you? Do you need to become more passionate or more analytical? or more hungry, tired, and upset. I don't know what works for you, but you either know or with just a bit of effort can learn. During paid consultations, my slots enthusiast clients tell me what it's like for them on a typical visit, and a lot of them do better by being more thoughtful. Others are overwhelmed by suddenly winning hand pays they've never gotten before and have a great deal of trouble getting out of the casino with any of their winnings. I've been overwhelmed by emotion, certainly. I was overwhelmed every time I won my biggest jackpot. Over a month, I won four or $5,000 hand pays. The first three were overwhelming, but I guess I, you could say I got used to winning that much after a couple of them. I was feeling confident. But then I won a $27,000 W2G hand pay. Surprise! And none of the experience I'd gained by winning those $5,000 jackpots mattered because I was again overwhelmed. If you win a massive jackpot, decide beforehand, like right now, to leave the casino. Just leave. All plans are shattered and there is no recovering anytime soon. My huge win was years ago and I'm still in awe. Yes, I got a little bit used to it, but it only helped a little when a few months later I won a car and accepted the $40,000 cash option. Being surprised happens, especially when playing slots, as that's kind of our whole goal. So have a plan. And I cannot imagine doing anything else after a tremendous win except leaving. Can you? Decide now while you're clear-headed. Then all you must do is remember, not think up a plan when you have an emotional event. But something much more minor happens far more often. We walk into a casino a little off-axis emotionally. What then should you do? Well, taking a break and relaxing usually works for most people, and that usually means not being on the casino floor. If you have a hotel room, that's great. Go calm down, get back to normal, get some rest, but fix whatever was the issue. If you're trying to replicate being tired, hungry, and a little upset, because that seems to be when you win hand pays, well, well, I don't know how you got that way in the first place, but maybe do that again? That reminds me when I went to a Halloween party in physics graduate school, I went as a tired graduate student who had just finished his master's thesis, but hadn't yet slept in the last three days. As I told my friends, it took me three days to prepare for that Halloween party, and unfortunately, no, I didn't win any of the many prizes for most interactive, most functional, most whatever costume. Oh well. So if you arrive at the casino in an odd emotional state, get yourself in the right frame of mind so that you do win a prize you might remember as a momentous event for the rest of your life. What else abruptly changes your emotions? Well, we could be treated poorly by another slots enthusiast or have an encounter with an unhelpful casino employee. These emotions affect us and not for the better. And how do we get over it? Assuming you can get over it. Triggers for switching your emotional state are deeply personal, but learning yours is more than about winning at slots. It's about being able to leave with your winnings. If your gambling goal is making money, not just entertainment, then you need to learn the skill of getting out of the casino with those wins. It's not just discipline and willpower alone. It's about knowing the battlefield and knowing what you're fighting. And usually, it's your emotions. What triggers your emotions when you're at the casino? And why were your emotions manipulated by the casino? You get one guess, which should be plenty. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my slots IQ membership group, where you get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. In the next segment of the show, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing the gaming industry for slots enthusiasts. Let's go over Iowa's gaming industry for playing slots. Iowa slot machine casino gambling consists of 19 commercial casinos and four American Indian tribal casinos. The minimum legal gambling age in Iowa does not depend upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos, poker rooms, bingo, the lottery, and paramutual wagering, it's all 21 years of age. Since 1972, Iowa has been at the forefront of the gambling industry with regards to legalized gambling after Nevada and New Jersey. Iowa was the first state to legalize riverboat casinos and allow both slot machines and table games at paramutual racetrack facilities. By doing so, they created the first racinos. 
In 2017, the IRGC requested gaming market analysis studies from two independent contracting companies to provide comprehensive Iowa gaming market studies, including Marquee Advisors and White Sand Gaming. You'll find links to these reports on my website article at professorslots.com slash IA. The negotiated and approved tribal state gaming compacts for Iowa's three federally recognized tribes is available using the search tool at Indian Gaming Compacts within the Indian Affairs Division of the U.S. Department of the Interior. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. In Iowa, it is legal to own a slot machine privately if it is 25 years old or older. The Iowa legislature created the Iowa Racing and Gaming Commission, IRGC, with the passing of the Paramutual Wagering Act of May 1983. The IRGC administers this act in the Exclusive Boat Gambling Act of 1989, which legalized riverboat casinos. In this section, I discuss Iowa gambling establishments. Iowa has 19 commercial casinos and three tribal casinos. The largest casino in Iowa is Prairie Meadows. The second largest casino is Horseshoe Council Bluffs. As usual, when there are too many casinos to mention here, a complete list along with a casino map are on my webpage for this state at professorslots.com slash IA. As an alternative to enjoying Iowa slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Bordering Iowa is to the north, Minnesota, to the east, Wisconsin and Illinois, to the south, Missouri, and to the west, Nebraska and South Dakota. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. states, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com, followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Minnesota Slots article is available at ProfessorSlots.com slash MN. Iowa's state tribal compacts with its three tribes with casinos have minimum and maximum theoretical pay limits of 80% and 99% of the amount wagered. However, Iowa's tribal casinos do not offer return statistics. Iowa's commercial casinos do not have theoretical payout limits. However, IRGC makes return statistics available on average for the last three months, at casino payback percentages. These gaming revenue reports also provide return statistics by slot machine denomination each month for each commercial casino. I wish I could share the graphs on this audio podcast, but cannot. In summary, Iowa slot machine casino gambling consists of 23 casinos, including four tribal casinos. Hello, I'm so excited to go through this Slots Labs process that prior slots enthusiasts, high limit and low limit gamblers at commercial casinos, tribal casinos, and riverboat casinos across the country use to grow their slots performance with more wins, more success at getting those winnings home, and making more money through the efforts that they're doing at their local casinos. If you join Slots Labs, you'll work very intimately with me for six weeks to apply this process to your slots play, to your goals, to your casino, and your slot machines, and your take-home results. This isn't just like a, here's a bunch of videos for you to watch, good luck. No, this is like we're going to sit down with you, give you the training you need, and then work with you personally to ensure you get the results and see the impact of this on your slots play. Bruce says, quote, the course not only gives you great insights into the world of slot machines, but also provides statistical and other trends and data to be a better slots player. You'll have assignments and interact with other members of the lab and share experiences and ideas. You'll take away many ideas and new information that will make you a better and more aware player. The course helped me fine-tune my level of playing and also to better identify machines to keep playing versus walking away, end quote. And Chuck says, quote, I greatly enjoyed interacting with the other students who offered their personal tips and strategies. I gleaned several things to try and now have a list of things to use on my next visit to a larger casino than the riverboat casinos near me. I also picked up invaluable information for exactly when to play certain machines to increase the odds of collecting a grand or a major, end quote. We've had other slots enthusiasts grow from three to over 150 hand pays in less than a year. We've had low limit slots players go from zero to hundreds of dollars in profit for each casino trip with their $100 bankroll. This process works. It just flat out works. And we want you to be next. But we only open registration, the slots lab, to a small group of people so we can keep it very intimate, keep it very hands on, and so we can give the individual attention to each slots enthusiast that I and my team really wants to give. We really want to get to know you and your roadblocks and your challenges and your unique opportunities and the style of play that you're trying to develop, whether low limit or high limit or anywhere in between, so that when you get through Slots Labs, it's not just some canned material. This is something that is designed exactly for what you need to reach your goals when playing slots. 
shots. So here's how it works. Every week for six weeks, you'll start by watching an in-depth video training by me. Now, these aren't quick little tips or advice or scratch the surface kind of videos. No, these are in-depth, half hour, 45 minute long trainings that really get into the weeds and give you the details of how casino systems work. And then number two, then you get assignments that you're doing at your casino that are proven methods that will really tap into how casinos are designed to work so that your slots performance grows. Now, these assignments that you're doing at your casino, they're not just kind of quick, like click here, click there, and now you're done type of assignments, nor are many of them about spending money playing slots, which is not a requirement of the course. But you should set aside about five hours a week of your time in order to really do a good job on these assignments. And we just don't leave you on your own to figure this out either. You get access to me and the whole community of other slots enthusiasts are going through this process with you. And you get access to them in a private online community where you can ask questions, get feedback, and have people really invest in you and in your slots play at your casino. A lot of slots enthusiasts have already gone through slots labs, got to the end, and they're like, John, these must hit by progressive estimates for these progressive slot machines alone is worth the price of the entire course, as well as giving you exactly what steps to take to continue to grow your slots play and take it to the next level even after slots labs ends. So register today at professorslots.com slash SL before it sells out, and I'll see you on the other side. Next up is the question and answer session from my initial rendition of today's topic from a prior live stream. I'll talk to you again afterward. Enjoy. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, a, a couple of uh, donations. Um, uh, Chuck? says, hello from stormy St. Louis. Uh, thank you, Chuck, uh, very much for your donation. Uh, your 66th donation of $20. Thank you so much. Um, I love how you do that. Uh, just, uh, it's great. Um, <laughs> uh, and also magpie 11. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, and oh, thank you for your $40 donation. I hope you raised your, your pennies by two amounts. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, thank you so much for your donation. Um, uh, magpie 11 says making up for last week. Love the topic. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, I, I won't give people away on who, uh, gave me an idea for the topic. Um, and I also have another one from Shawana. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you sincerely. Thank you so much. All, all of you. Uh, if you want to make a donation it is available down at the bottom of the live chat. If you aren't able to log in or have a, 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 a way to pay through YouTube, you can also go to professorslots.com slash donate. Uh, and uh, we have another one. Lady D, thank you. Love your course, channel, and Slots Enthusiast uh, Network. Thanks, John. You're very welcome. Um, I'm happy to do it. It's it's you guys are great, uh, and um, you know, it's a it's a wonderful group of people. Happy to be of service. Um, uh, right. So let me put that away. Um, <clears throat> So like I said, being surprised happens, so have a plan. But something more minor, much more minor, happens far more often. We walk into a casino a little off-axis, emotionally. What, uh, what should you do? Well, you know, it can be a long, well, how did this happen? It could be a long drive. Nobody cut you off, but it could be a long drive or, you know, you're, you're after work or it's just like you're not 100%. Uh, and, uh, you know, take a break, take a break and relax. That usually works for most people. And that usually means not on the casino floor. It's not exactly a, a, a relaxing place. I mean, that's the whole point, right? That the casino is trying to do and make it so that you're uh, always moving and, and no place to sit except at a slot machine, that sort of thing. So if you have a good, but if you have a hotel room, that's great. Go calm down, take a nap, whatever. Get, get back to normal, get some rest, but fix whatever was the issue. If you're trying to replicate being tired, hungry, and a little upset, because that seems to be when you win, hand pays. Well, I don't know how you got that way in the first place, but maybe do whatever it was again. 
That reminds me of a story. I went to a Halloween party in physics graduate school. I went as a tired graduate student who had just finished his master's degree, but hadn't got much sleep in the last three days. As I told my friend, it took me three days to prepare myself for that Halloween party. And unfortunately, no, I didn't win any of the didn't win any of the many prizes for most interactive, most functional, most whatever costume. Oh, well, most interactive was somebody who brought pens and they could uh, uh, Sharpies uh, and they could write on the person who was scantily clad. Uh, the other one was a couple of uh, good, uh, good friends of mine who went as a shelf where they held a board in front of them. We all put our drinks on it. <laughs> Sorry. These are fun times, fun times. So um, we've covered arriving at the casino in an odd emotional state. And we've talked about monument, momentous events, which we'll remember for a lifetime. What else? Well, we could be poorly, poorly treated by another slots enthusiast or have an encounter with an unhelpful casino employee. What else has happened to you at a casino which, you know, ticked you off or changed your mood and not for the better? And how did you get over it? Assuming you did get over it, let's hear your stories. Comment in the live chat if you're here with us live or if you're watching the recording later, leave a comment below. Remember, share not just what happened, but how you got over it. We're interested in both. Thanks. Uh, if you have a question, use hashtag question. That's so I can be sure to spot your question to me instead of comments in the live chat to each other. And we have Jill, who has... There it goes. Um who has shared a super sticker. Uh, it is a, it's a, is it a hippopotamus spinning in an office chair <laughs> or something like that? That's pretty cool looking. I'm sorry you can't see it. Uh, um, sorry you can't see. Uh, perhaps you can see it in the live chat if you visit. Um, I can't show it up on the screen. That's that's pretty awesome. Again, pretty inventive. inventive. Um, so let me... Uh, you know, check over your questions. I, I, what I try to do is talk for almost 20 minutes uh, at times. And, uh, uh, and then the rest of this time is spent, you know, talk about a particular topic and then, uh, you know, get your responses, talk about them and then answer your questions for the next hour and a half hour and 40 minutes. Uh, when I did this last time, uh, it was pretty interesting. Uh, Last week, I, I got um, a rather Tuesday. I have live streams at Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. And as usual, for like two and a half years now, uh, Saturday at noon. And uh, if, if you're, you know, more if you're available or if this time is inconvenient, I, some places have a great day, but other days, uh, other parts of the country are like under bad weather. And so, you, you know, are, if you're available, more available, more convenient for you, Tuesdays at 7 p.m., Thursdays at 3 p.m. and uh, Saturdays at noon. And I don't repeat. Uh, I, I have a different topic every time. There's so much to talk about. And uh, so you're welcome to visit me there. I just wanted to give you a chance to start asking questions. And uh, and people are talking about vacation. That's wonderful. Uh, and, and thank you. So I want to verbally say that, um, uh, Paula, thank you uh, for moderating today. I have <laughs> I, I've been moderating myself during my live streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I, I, I realized that I've kind of like made things hard for you. So I've turned on a, a feature. Um, one of them is slow mode so that uh, you can only post once per minute because I had a, I had two people, well, one person and a robot. And the one person was just hitting it as hard as possible, comment after comment, short as possible, and just just, I don't know, 50 comments and 30 seconds, something like that. It's just a lot. And it was all nothing of interest for us uh, just to be able to do it. It's kind of like when, you know, you've seen that meme of a couple of dogs running. It's like, uh, live your life like somebody left the gate open. <laughs> and that's what, that was what was happening. And then I also got a robot who was like, 
just doing it as fast as possible and and uh, sh- sharing inappropriate content just like wow and uh, uh so now i'm trying to offer this feature to make everything this a better experience for everybody i don't mean to go on about it but i wanted to um let you know that i grow and learn and try to make things better uh but thank you paula for being moderator it's helpful so helpful as i'm learning more and more uh let's check through the comments <laughs> okay all right um it's not a question but jason uh, uh, uh who has uh, we have a long history. I go to his casino on occasion. Um, law of attraction is secondary to the law of vibration. Be on the right frequency before hitting the slots. Uh, and 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 one of the things is, uh, you know, <laughs> and and there's other ways to state this. Um, this is actually a huge topic. We should have many, many discussions about this because as Magpie 11 says, we are powerful manifestors. Um, how we feel, how we um, uh, act, um, what we think is, uh, and you know, what are, what are the, what are some of the military folks call it positive mental attitude? Uh, you know, if you are balanced and ready and aware uh, then you can make things happen. Yeah. Uh, so let me know. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, if you are, if you find a way to prep yourself, maybe that's one thing I didn't ask was, um, you know, I ask you what goes wrong and how do you deal with it, but also how do you, um, kind of like prepare yourself for going to the casino? Do you, you know, like before you enter into battle, uh, do you, do you, you know, what, what is it that you do? Do you meditate? Do you do other things? I mean, this is, this is a wide open topic and we'll only talk about some of this today, but I think that it will be some, a type of topic that as time goes by, as the years go by, I'll bring up more and more because this is us managing the casino manipulating us and how good at we, we are at that using our strategies, my strategies that are counter strategies against casino manipulation. Uh, all this is it's, it may not be a little diff- difficult to, to capture all this, but I think you get the point. Okay. Uh, Shawana, um, I see questions. Good. Uh, Shawana says, negative emotions uh, do affect my gambling outcome. I'm at a different level in my life. I don't allow people to upset me as much. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, um, I think that there's a lot of us who have, um, uh, who have kind of grown that way. I know I have. I, I remember some of the earlier comments that I got on, on YouTube and I was just so upset. But then, you know, with experience and with exposure, I began to realize that uh, some of these comments were well polished and only used against YouTubers under 5,000 subscribers, you know, attack the weak. You know, separate them from the herd, and I was. And once I realized um, that there was a way people were handling uh, this, let's see. Somebody wanted to. Uh, uh, I I have too many windows open. Somebody's asking me something on YouTube as a comment. Funny, I should mention that. Uh, but that's, it looks like a good question. But it's not part of the live stream unless it's in the live stream. I'll answer it afterwards. Okay. Um, well done, Shawana. Uh, yes, this is one that I was thinking about, uh, Lady D. I, I don't do so well when I know I am about to leave and feel the need to get more play in. That's when I for, forget my strategies. And I, I agree, you know, when we start chasing wins, I I think, you know, I'd like to get a better handle on why that happens. Are we getting tired? Are we, um, you know, having some feeling of we're almost done and or if it's going to happen, it's got to happen now. And, and it's sort of like the false thinking and the habit forming. I, I, you know, I 
<laughs> the example that I have in my head is YouTube. When you start to say, you know, that's it, and give other signals like the video is coming to an end, that's when people leave. And if if you if you say, oh no, I wanted to talk for another about another thing for like two hours, <laughs> it's already too late. I'll probably see a little uh, retention b- uh, bump <laughs> when I when I said that. Um, I I, uh, um, I have I remember when I taught. Uh, torque in uh, physics class and I would twist my knee and afterwards it would hurt. And then I was just like, why, why do I feel the need to torque my knee? <laughs> and it hurts every year. And I got a couple of classes that day where we talk about torque and I'm just like, stop it. Don't do that, John. Um, so Jan says, uh, thank you for the comments. Uh, several times I've gotten upset with people playing two or three machines when the casino is busy. I have to walk away and cool down so I don't say anything rude. Uh, that can happen. Yes. Yes, that can happen. Uh, and uh, uh, Magpie 11 uh, says, I like to prep myself in an emotional state before I play slots. Most of the time I set an intention and goal. Playing for, for me is about having fun. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, uh, and Jill says, uh, yes, uh, uh, meditate. Um, and uh, Shawana says, uh, hashtag question. I, I, I need this today regarding meditation and positive energy. Uh, right. That's, you know, there's, there's the yoga terms of positive energy. And, uh, you know, some of some some yoga professionals uh, that were friends were like, you know, do you sure you want to spend time in casinos because it's all that negative energy. But yet you guys are so wonderful and I appreciate you and this experience that that we have on these community videos three times a week is just wonderful. Um, And I don't consider that negative energy at all. (laughs) um uh it's so fun uh let's see it's matt and linda well fun uh sorry i don't mean to give out your names uh hashtag question now that i'm taking your course should i reduce my casino visits except for the tasks homework lessons till done or continue for learning great course by the way thank you um thank you for for a testimonial, I appreciate it. Uh, it's really up to you. For some people, you know, for some people, they need to do a lot to kind of switch things around. And I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you if if they should go more often during the course or as much, um, just to start working on that change of approach. Uh, or if they want to wait to the end and put together a plan. Um, I recognize that a lot of people, um, uh, and I, I, I don't want to talk about the data of how far people get in the course. So many people finish it. Uh, but I tried to make, uh, it's like writing a book, right? When you're an author and you understand that people don't finish reading a book. So you try to put whatever you want to convey in like the first third. And that way you get the message out. My book has graphs and charts at the end. Uh, And uh, because fewer people get that far, the jokes are at the beginning, the the funniness, the humor, the stories are at the first part uh, to keep people going because, you know, it's like that YouTube advice I was talking about. You can say the greatest thing in the world but if everybody left before that because it sucked for 10 whole minutes, <laughs> then, then they don't hear that wonderful thing. Why not move it towards the front? Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can you can go either way. It's up to you. Uh, depends on your particular c- circumstance. This is why I have paid consultations, because this is a sort of question where I say, so, you know, what are you doing? Why might you need to take a break? I know where that topic, whatever that topic is, is in the course. And so have you gotten that far and how long might you have to wait? 
So this is, you know, there's very individualized. Uh, generic questions can be, um, you know, hard to answer when I don't know the details. And so I have a part of the slots journey with me is uh, to customer journey with me is to help figure this stuff out. Um, I would say that, you know, go, right? Uh, you have to go anyway. Um, I, 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 I say this even though um, my, was it my last paid consultation? I think I talked about it on Thursday. Uh, 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 somebody felt they really needed to just learn to leave with money. They hadn't been doing it. It was really hard for them. So I said, go six times to the casino. And the first time, don't even spend any money. Have money, but don't spend money. And then just try to get out with it and do that six times in a row. They're, they're, they're a few miles from casinos, a few miles from their house. They were going all the time. And I said, just try to see if you can get out. And they contacted me in the next day and they said, I went um, and I, I, I played uh, and I immediately won a $3,400 hand pay and I left. And I'm like, that's not what we discussed. So I, I don't want to tell you, um, uh, fun, uh, you know, what works for you. I'm sure you'll manage it, manage your own learning. Yeah. I'm not a, well, uh, and Rick says, I tried to only play when I feel lucky and balanced balance is uh, That's a great word. Uh, when I get frustrated or tired, I stop good for you. Um, and Mr. Torres says the days I go to the casino, I try to look down, not directly at the screen in order to not get hypnotized. Could that be possible staring at the machine? Well, it certainly does affect our eyes and there's plenty of, um, uh, physiological things that can happen. Uh, there's one of the things that can happen that they talk about, uh, is if we get sunshine in our eyes we stay awake longer uh, and the reason for that is the blue light affects our eyes and so a lot of the um i'm sorry i'm i'm i'm, I'm a physics in physics i'm like optics and, and light and waves and sound uh, but anyway uh, blue light uh, is one of the things they're trying to block uh, with our lenses and our eyeglasses is an option that you can get in order to be able to not have that problem where you can't sleep at night. <laughs> you know, and then there's my uh, coworker who had a sensitivity to flashing lights, which immediately gave him a, a migraine. And at least he didn't fall unconscious. So if it's bothering you, look away. Good job. <laughs> Um, Jack, uh, Jade hashtag question. Hello. Uh, how do you feel about the giant slot machines? Thank you. Well, this, uh, this, these giant slot machines with the bench holding like three, four people in front of it and just extra, extra large. Um, uh, it's, it reminds me of going through casinos and seeing a tremendous display. It could be like progressives and it's just like a, a it's a presentation that cost so much money and i call that trying too hard i i like the stuff that sort of stands out but isn't like a 25 foot tall neon cowboy smoking a cigarette you know it it's just it's like too much and that's obvious so uh and and that is machines that I avoid. So the giant ones I, I avoid. Now, if you feel like it's a new machine and it's set up to win, you know, maybe. But my instinct is trying too hard. That's what I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have um, – so hashtag question from uh, – Doug, <laughs> we have a historic horse racing machines here in uh, Virginia. Since these machines don't have a set 
payout percentage will your techniques work with these machines? Um, I debate whether they have a set payout. Um, I haven't found that Kentucky has them and Kentucky's like 30 miles away. Um, uh, not exactly, so don't figure out where I live. But but I've been to uh, Newport Gaming, and they have and a Derby City and Red Mile, uh, where they have historic horse racing. And uh, from what the floor manager was explaining to me, uh, there's a lot that he said. Things like it's a test case in Kentucky. Uh, this was Thanksgiving last year, um, and so it's more than a year ago. And uh, but he was saying it's a test case to go to other states which don't have prohibit slot machines, but they have paramutual racing, and that's all they need. They don't have to have anything new to the gaming regs because they use the paramutual um, uh, racing stuff. So, so uh, while the legal aspect of it doesn't have theoretical payouts, like some states uh, do for um, slot machines, the sl- the states that have a minimum theoretical payout for slot machines, it's not used. It's far too low for the business to be able to set it, to have, um, uh, you know, to use it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, average return in Nevada is 93% and their uh, minimum theoretical percent of the payout is uh, 75%. Don't even get close to it. So I think you're basing this off. There's no law saying what the limit is. And I think my misunderstanding is that some of these states that have slots have set the return. And that's not true either. They set the limits. And usually they're not really helpful. Um, Pennsylvania, for instance, has an upper limit. And that's painful because it's under 100%, which means casinos can't um, deliberately set winning machines and that really frustrates them in any case. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is that HHR machines are set by the casino. Uh, I have, do I have it? I think I have it. Uh, I have my report on Newport gaming and let me dig it out here for you. Because one part of that is always, if the state has it, um, to go to return statistics and look at that. So where is this at? Ah, here it is. Okay, so I will share my screen. Where are you at? Add to stream. Go there. Put your comment away. Uh, and this is under, uh, if, if you go to... Um, if you go to Professor Slots and you go to, I have to tell you how to find it. Uh, if you go to, this is professorslots.com. There's a button here called Reviews. And if you go there uh, and, and it's on the second page, the one for Newport, Newport Gaming, uh, you'll see my reviews, including my casino trip reports, trip reviews. So uh, Reviews. Uh, and then second page, these are all over the country. Uh, and down towards the bottom of the second page would be Newport, Newport Gaming Casino Trip Review, which has only HHR machines. And if I scroll down, this is your um, HHR machines. This is the return statistics. Oh, and look, Newport Gaming is, is is consistently for like six months when I recorded this, I have to do these, uh, go back in time up, up for these. They've chosen to be lowest. And there's also KRM, which decide to be highest, then decide to be lowest, and then kind of middle of the ground. Ellis Park was doing pretty well. You know, these are all deliberate choices. And so when you say there is no set payout percentage, I say, look, <laughs> there is. You're talking about um, 
something else, legal limits or, or something. Okay, so getting back uh, from that, thank you. Okay, uh, and um, so will the techniques work from the with these machines? Yes, um, I have found that uh, these HHR facilities haven't invested in being a casino very much. They've invested in being a racetrack with some machines, so they're not very sophisticated and if they're not very sophisticated you know my strategies are not counter strategy or are not our counter strategies and so the the location has to be sophisticated enough to be to have some of those ways to manipulate you and uh, hhr facilities are much better than a convenience store which is pretty much you know, it doesn't work. Strategies don't work there. But at HRR machines, there are a few. I know they have location, 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 because I've made great use of it. Uh, at um, Newport uh, Gaming, as you can read, but I also didn't write a report on going to uh, Derby City and Red Mile, and they all had location, location, location uh, strategy for that. Um, so, yeah. And even if it didn't work, like at convenience stores, loss limits, preserving gains, all the other stuff, keeping records, all the other stuff that I talk about um, outside of strategies works just fine. <laughs> okay. I, for a second there, I thought somebody was saying, I was annoyed with you. <laughs> uh, Rick says, I'm enjoying your book. When I get back from vacation in July, uh, I am building questions to get one-on-one -on -one session with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, go right ahead. Sounds good. Um, uh, yes, isn't that amazing? Um, I have another report which talks about going to Horseshoe, Indianapolis, formerly in Indiana, formerly known as uh, uh, Indiana Grand, and 10% of the machines were broken. That means you know, like 1,500 machines total, 150 of them were off with a move order or just shattered. And I looked at some of the work orders and they were four months old. So I'm like, do they not have the parts? Do they not have the personnel to fix them? Do they, you know, what's what's going on? It's a huge loss of money. And I even figured out how much of a loss of money it was uh, per month. But, uh, you know, I, I see some some people just like banging and I'm, I'm like, wow, that is something else. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, it sounds that and, and from what you said about your button being stuck instead, uh, you know, that could be because it was pounded on, but it all could also be, you know, somebody sloppily drinking, uh, spilling their drink. Uh, yeah, uh, right. Um, and walking away because it affects your mood, you, you've lost the mood that you want to have and then continue that that can happen. The casino environment is like a lot going on and it's not typically a calming place <laughs> and that's somewhere else and you know they can give you a lounge uh if you're at a high enough tier level and i always thought those lounges were great um one of the things you can do is go to the high limit room and it's usually quieter um at least it's uh not quite so much overhead music and general you know hubbub uh, coming from the casino floor i i think the noise level is like half just right off the top uh and i i i found some um uh, some calming time there <laughs> okay uh <laughs> my moderator, who is supposed to be my friend, <laughs> says you can ask the question, but he, uh, but he always brings up the receipts. LOL. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, uh, TJ, for letting me know um, that we are uh, hit the the fortieth like button. Uh, how how are we doing? Just to take a look at that, um, and uh, 40, 41 likes, awesome, um, great. Uh, actually, um, we're doing great on uh, views, and I was going to check to see if analytics were were up uh, to to see that. Anyway, um, three hundred and twenty one views. Okay. Uh, 
good. Let me just make sure I go hit what go back to what I need. Uh, question: Your advice uh, when I start to hear machines going giving out bonuses? Don't know if they are good or bad. I get excited and think I should bet higher because this is it. I should um, should I start doing that? Um, I would go easy. Uh, check to see if it's you know we, what we're seeing is a lot of bonus wins are less money. And if you're hearing bonus wins, you know, you may get a bonus, but will it be money uh, or will it just be bonus round after bonus round and you win as much as you bet or maybe a little bit less? So keep an eye on it. This is uh, a good sign, a good sign, uh, or it used to be. And, you know, we got to sort of keep up with where things are at at the casino. They, as I mentioned last time, they got all these survey slot manufacturers got all these survey results that casinos had sent out through the mail, the players clubs, and everybody said, I want to have bonus rounds. And slot manufacturers listened very carefully. And they said, I didn't hear anybody say they wanted money. They just said they wanted slot. They, they wanted bonuses. Okay. So we'll make machines that have bonuses, but not money. Cause you didn't ask for that. What? <laughs> so now we have a lot of machines that give out bonuses and isn't that great oh but not money no you had to ask that that's separate and um you know because as i mentioned the reason for this is that when you make a bet that's when you spend the money and if you make an immediate bet again it again makes money but if it instead goes into bonus rounds which could last Five, ten, fifteen. I've I've seen people letting fifteen hundred bonus rounds just play out, uh, and it was like half an hour. Well, the, during that time, the casino isn't making any money because nobody's making a bet. They're just waiting for the results of that first bet half an hour ago, and and so you know, all this time, despite people liking bonus rounds. People were making money. Uh, uh, the casino wasn't making money from from offering that, and so now they were like, "Well, if we just don't give them money from the bonus rounds, at least we're making up that much." Thank you, Russell, for your nineteen dollar and ninety nine cent donation, and it is very much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, and if um, everyone would please like this video, uh, we'll get a crowd in and that would be wonderful to have. And Russell, can I buy your book directly from you instead of you giving Amazon most of your profit? Uh, you can buy the PDF. The hardcover, softcover audio book isn't something I can sell because I agreed with Amazon that they could sell that. Uh, but if you want the PDF, um, I give it away free with the course for one thing, just to, you know, I'm not pushing the course. I'm just saying it's free with the course. It's one of several bonuses where I just take that cost of that bonus, uh, which can be bought as zero. And so the PDF is available there. Now you can also uh, buy the PDF. I don't really, I think I still have it available. If you go to, I think I still have, yeah, I think I still have it available. If you go to professorslots.com slash shop. So let's uh, do that. I will uh, go back to Professor Slots and we will go, and I'll put that away. If you go to slash shop, Uh, and and boy, is that a uh, and, and here is uh, fifteen ninety seven seventeen dollars for the gambling record keeping templates. If you buy the course, they come free, but you can buy them separately here. Both of these things, and I haven't really marketed much on this uh, uh, because not many people want uh, the PDF. Which, if you wanted to print it, you have to take it someplace and print it, uh, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, that's where it's available, professorslots.com slash shop.
Now, I was thinking about making the gambling record keeping templates more marketing on that uh, and uh, setting it up a little bit differently and, and offering stuff. But these gambling record keeping templates are uh, updated for 2022 uh, from last year and also uh, updated in the course as well as a bonus. So both of those are free with the course and more besides. You also get one month free uh, with the uh, Slots Enthusiast Growth Network if you buy the course. So it ends up being like, how much are you actually paying for the course? Yep. Uh, okay. So uh, keep asking questions. Uh, one of the, um, because that's where we're at. Uh, let's keep it going, guys. Guys and girls. Men and women. Mm. If you don't, I'm going to talk about talk about my dog. My dog has got um, uh, two, about two weeks left, a little bit more. Um, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. Two weeks from now, he's going in for a little operation. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Um, there is a, uh, I have a, a, a like over here. I have a subscribe over there. You cannot see the YouTube subscribe the word subscribe why because that is my cat and my cat sits in front of the subscribe that's her spot now and then you have um down here is is isaac um who is uh four more days he'll be 12 months old and what a puppy uh, he's, he's something else. Uh, we, we went in yesterday and got him weighed. I went in yesterday, got him weighed. He and I went in and, and got him weighed yesterday and he's 75 pounds, 75 pounds. And that should be within five pounds of where he ends up if I don't overfeed him, uh, which I haven't been. Uh, ask your questions. And if you don't, uh, and I run out of things to say, uh, well, that'll happen. Um, so yes, um, <laughs> uh, I think I've kind of like finished, uh, everything I wanted to say. Uh, yes, the, the last time during a live stream, was it Thursday, Tuesday, uh, I, uh, Isaac barked and it was the big boy of a bark. <laughs> It wasn't the little yip that I've had before. I, he did that one time at the end of a podcast and I put it, I just left it and they were like, <laughs> um, and that was, that was pretty funny. It's going to be out there forever. Um, uh, right. So question from Lady D. Uh, in your experience, if you see it's a good time to play, how long does that last? I feel a rush to have to play now before they turn it down. Um, yeah, uh, th there is that feeling of once you're winning. Um, how it affects me is I will bet as fast as possible. If it's a good time, and I'm getting to your answer, when it's a good time to play, I don't let the machine finish. I, I just like tap the button again, once for the bet, once to bring it to a conclusion, and then on to the next bet. Bam, 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 bam. You know, where the, the third bet was a win, but moving on. And so I don't let it play out. I try to get as many bets in per minute, even if I win something. Now, if it's a hand pay, everything stops and it, it all has to be taken care of with paperwork. But otherwise, I'm just just going as fast as possible, fast as I can make the machine go. Because if it's a good time, it's a good time. Uh, I don't know if you do that either. Uh, um, also, now the other thing um, is, you know, when it's over, it's over. Uh, and I try to notice as quickly as possible. It's usually not a small change. And lately I've been noticing, oh, look at that. It's on the hour. Huh. How, funny how that works. You know, some human programmed the schedule and just went by the half hour and by the hour. 
<laughs> it's 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 a natural thing to do. Why not? And and so I'm like, when it comes to the hour, I go I go like I hesitate and I I do my evaluation. You know, I I make ten bets, ten bets, you know, thirty bets, and then fifty bets, and that's you know to bring it up to a hundred total bets, and that's each. Each stage is like it's got to work. It's got to be a giving machine still like it was. Otherwise, you know, tough love. I'm out of here. And so uh, but I, I, I try to do that on the, the hour because I suspect that's happening. Uh, uh, changes are made at that time. But it can happen. It also can, you know, that's one casino. I'm at Miami Valley Gaming. I was just like, wow, son of a gun. Right on the hour. Um, but, uh, you know, it could happen any time. So I try not to lose money by playing a machine that stopped winning. And how long do I go? A um, hundred bets at, at most. Um, yeah, it can go fast when I'm just betting as fast as possible. I want, I try to bet as fast as possible, but I also have to really focus because I'm just not like hitting it and looking away. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, my emotional state is focused. And if I'm not watching what I'm doing, then that's not a good thing. There's a lot of waste when that happens and, uh, or can be. That's why I, I, someone mentioned, don't want, uh, don't like seeing somebody uh, playing two to three machines in the casino at the same time. I don't even know what's that like. My machine has my full attention. I have tried playing side by side machines at the same time. And I'm just like too much, too fast. You know, I, I, I'm trying to understand the patterns and the rhythms and what's going on with the clock. And, and one machine is just enough for me. There's a lot going on. <laughs> uh, Chris says, as a low roller, it's a comment, not a question. As a low roller, I'm I'm happy winning $2 on an eight cent bet, dancing drums, but many people glare at me triggering bonus games with such a low bet. I no fear of losing my budget does cost me uh, big bucks. No, uh, I mean, I don't want you to worry about that. There's a lot of people who are like, well, everybody's making bigger bets and the casino is rising costs of raising the minimum bets and all that. And it's like, resist it, resist it. You know, this, this is, this is, you know, the, the, the slots channels are like, well, you know, we're going to have to go in and, you know, we used to spend $10,000, but now we're going to have to spend $20,000. Why? You know, it be, be because and I'm like, what? You know, everybody wants to raise their costs and um, uh, how much they spend. And I'm, I just don't know why. I sent out a survey, not this year's survey for the annual survey that with a lot of, with five questions, but last year, 2021, beginning of 2021. And I said, what's the one thing that's holding you back from winning? And the biggest response was, I, I'm not bringing enough money to the casino. What? You mean, if you, what? <laughs> and I just, I, I really had to get over that. And we've had a couple of live streams about that topic um, and, and just trying to understand where the heck did that idea come from? And, and why do people think if they brought more money, they would win? You know, if you're making minimum bets and you're slowly, you know, eight cent bets and you're slowly making money or you're just slowly playing through your bankroll, good for you. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, hashtag question from Magpie 11. On the FIPO method, do you test 20 machines in certain areas of the casino? Um I, I put up a video uh, that's gotten some interest. Uh, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. And that video is about playing idle slot machines using the five spin method. And I found that some areas of the casino are less used, less busy, less people go over in that corner of the casino. And if you find that 
how long a machine has not been played matters at your casino, then you have to find the area of the casino that has the least played machines. I mean, I know casinos would just like to have the lights on and everybody go everywhere. But there are corners uh, that get little attention, less attention. And when this casino setup is in place, then this counter strategy of mine works. So this is all very subtle. Um, I mean, this is a subtle explanation for big bucks. <laughs> um, uh, like, for instance, sometimes there is a high limit room, which doesn't get a lot of attention because people in that part of the country maybe don't want to go there or there's other reasons. But if the five spin method works and nobody's playing the machines, you know, 1130, 1145 on a Sunday morning before the church folk get to the casino is probably the longest time in which somebody would be uh, willing to, uh, uh, would would find a machine that hadn't been played for the longest. So I think there are, uh, and that's the criteria that I talk about with the five spin method that um, only recently have I gone through my notes and found, oh yeah, I should mention this, um, uh, of, of using the five spin method to try to get the best return. You can get a return or not, uh, but uh, you know, when's the best time, as you very well know, when's the best time to, to, to um, you know, get the return highest? What machines do you play to get the return highest? And one of the things I hadn't mentioned until, until yesterday's video was play idle machines. Yeah. Um, th thank you, uh, John, very much for the uh, super sticker. It is a, looks like a genie. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's something on a rocket that's exploding uh, on them. Uh, is that a reference to my being an aerospace engineer? <laughs> I did. I do earth breathing engines, not, not rocket engines, um, uh, air breathing, uh, gas turbine. <laughs> um, but thank you uh, very much for the $50 donation. Um, it is very much appreciated. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to gather funds to be able to go off to Alabama and Oklahoma uh, to be able to solve the problem of class two games. I'm working on it from a distance, but I need to go. And I was able to solve the state of Washington's return statistics, uh, excuse me, state of Washington's uh, uh, class three machines based on the scratch ticket lottery, because it's all there in the rules. And I read them and that's it. Um, and then HHR games are just south of me, 35 miles or so for the nearest um, Kentucky uh, gaming uh, place with historic horse racing. And uh, so that's been very con convenient. But the class two bingo style machines are not conveniently located. And I'm going to have to get on an airplane or something. Yeah. Um, uh, right. So, um, I, I missed, I missed the questions. Got to find my spot. Uh, yes. Uh, Russell says, um, I tested a new to me casino last week. Five pull worked, went with $20 bankroll, left with $30. Should I go back and try high, high limit? Um, I usually go an intermediate step. Um, instead of just jumping the high limit, I might go and make max bet, you know, or, or, or go with a hundred dollars um, or just go with $20 again and see if it's repeatable. Um, uh, because $20 isn't, doesn't, it means you didn't play a lot of machines. And so um, I want a little more confidence, build a little more security, a little more. Um, this is what's happening. Confirmation uh, uh, by by doing it again, uh, and um, you know, or or making like maximum bets or just minimum bets on more machines, and build some confidence. High limit is you know a big step, and I recommend an intermediate step or two uh, before doing that. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Um, Mira Doctor, 
Uh, hashtag question. Do you pick do you pick demonstration of the slot by bankroll? How do you pick oh, how do you pick denomination uh, of the machine? I base it on um, okay. When I had when I personally I play high limits. Um, personally, I don't have any hobbies anymore except for my dog. <laughs> so I, I haven't been playing high limit, uh, particularly since I got laid off and I have a budget and all, all those other things. And I want to learn more about what you guys are doing. So I take a three hundred dollar bankroll uh, once a month to a casino new to me usually, uh, and evaluate, review it as I was uh, showing some of that. But when you have a $3,000 bankroll, like I used to, I could play, well, not a hundred dollar machine cause it's not nearly enough bankroll, but I could play a $5 machine, $10 denomination machine and quarter dime nickel penny even though penny might be the biggest bet at maximum bet of, you know, like $8 still with a $3,000 bankroll, there really wasn't a limit. Um, but with a $300 bankroll, this whole raising the minimum uh, bet that the casinos are doing is just driving me crazy. They're, they're turning away the people with the smallest bankrolls because it's not enough money to play. I was happy to see Russell talk about a twenty dollar bankroll and, and made and, and and left with thirty dollars, you know. But but how much can you? I mean, maybe he made eight cent bet or something like that. But when you, your minimum bet is sixty dollars, sixty cents, you know, on a penny machine, it gets to be a lot of money needed to even get started. And so, you know, that really is a restriction. I. Uh, We'll do a couple of different things with denomination. If your if your state has return statistics, I look and see what the best one is. Uh, otherwise, I try to find. You know, I've sat, I've gone through casinos. Uh, Firekeeper comes to mind, and I've looked at the best best machines in the. I mean, the best machine, the best location, and you know, visible from a distance and in largest intersection. And I've sat down the machine and gone, no, <laughs> because it was like a, um, you know, $10 machine or minimum bet $5. And I'm like, what is this not in? The, why is this not in the high limit room? I mean, what's it doing out on the main casino floor? I'm not going to, you know, spend that much money. And that's the sort of thing that I also see at other places where they, have 10 cent denomination right next to $10 denomination. And I'm like, I've got a budget and I'm, I'm, you know, trying to stick with it and I'm not going to play a $10 machine because, you know, there goes half my budget. Yeah. So, um, when it's, when you're testing out, there's so many different ways to answer this. When you're testing out to see if you've ever, if, if you have a five pull method, remember the casino has to have the, the, the strategy, the setup, which my counter strategy, counter strategy takes advantage of, then you're checking to see if they have it first step. And before going to the high limit room, you make minimum bets to see if you have like the five spin method works. So, uh, and I, you know, what I was just talking about was there's a minimum, there's a minimum that, that uh, you might have to bring and that's going up. And it really frustrates me that casinos are forcing people to not go anymore when, when they have many thousands of people with that kind of bankroll that they're turning away uh, just for a few, far less people with a little bit more money. You know, you can't run a casino on whales. Yeah, they can drop a certain amount of money, but that hundred dollar bankrolls, those add up to a lot more than the high limit players. And they should know that from the data. Um, in any case, um, uh, if I want to play, um, I guess you could sort of back it out. Um, what's the minimum bet that you can find uh, on slot machines in your, your, uh, casino uh, penny machines it might be 30 cents but some of us minimum is 60 cents um, and others of us only get 88 cents and so that will determine um, whether you do that or you go to a nickel machine which has a minimum six credit bet 
And then you're like, well, that's 30 cents. Okay. You know, you can afford that. Not nearly as many machines, but how many do you need to have in order to find the one that wins? You know, or, or are you one of those people that plays two at a time because you're looking for the two best casinos and hoping they're side by side in your casino? Uh, I think there would be different different parts of the casino and you can't play it at once. Um, yeah, so uh, how much money you bring can be very limiting and that's how you choose the denomination. Uh, hey, Rodney. Uh, question. Uh, hello, Professor. Thoughts on decision fatigue during long playing sessions? Uh, yes. When you start sweating through your shirt, kind of like what I'm doing right now with with all these wonderful questions, uh, you you do get tired. And um, so I would suggest that you make regular breaks. Uh, I remember um, when I was younger, I went into the casino at two o'clock in the afternoon and I left 12 hours later two o'clock in the morning, Lakeside Casino in um, uh, Western Iowa. Uh, and I was exhausted. I drove home, couldn't get a place at the hotel because whatever, whatever, it's in my book. Um, and and what do you do? I mean, uh, y- you take breaks, you manage your, your how tired you are. Unless, you know, you're that other person I was just telling you about. I won't say you who you are, Chuck, um, <laughs> where, where when you're tired, you do better. I'm just like, you know, I, I don't want to leave that option out, but yes, um, decision fatigue. Uh, I don't normally get decision fatigue. Uh, what I get uh, for playing slots because I, I, I'm not tired of making the decisions that I know how to make. It's when I see something new. It's when I get a question I haven't gotten before here and I put some energy into it and I'm like, hmm, I wonder, yeah, let me think about, you know, think about that for the inter- excellent question, you know, and that, that is uh, using that brain power and that's, uh, um, you know, uh, can be fatiguing after two hours, but I find uh, that my voice gives out, hope oh, reminds me, My voice gives out before my brain goes out on these two hour sessions. I must I think that was because of graduate school was uh, first year of physics graduate school was the hardest thing I ever did. And then I did the second year of physics graduate school, which was the hardest thing I ever did. And it would not have been possible if I hadn't had the first year of physics graduate school. Um, uh, <laughs> um there's a uh, martial arts technique. Um, uh, Mr. Torres says uh, someone can have bad energy, transfer that energy around the players sitting around him. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, in Taekwondo, which I took for years, uh, we had some special events where we were learning techniques that we weren't normally taught. And one of them was to master our chi, or at least learn we had she and what to, you might start to be able to do with it with practice. And one of the things that you would do is um, normally we'd stand in front of each other and one person would go ahead and punch, always a punch. And then the other person would do something to defend and nobody's touching anybody, but uh, because we weren't that kind of Taekwondo. Uh, and we were just practicing and we'd practice our responses to a punch coming in. And uh, during these special days, uh, the person who was punching would punch. And it's, again, not meant to hit a chest or anything like that. It's well short of it. They're back far enough where they're not hitting. Uh, but they go and they punch and then you do something to counter it and you practice doing different somethings. OK, on the special days. The person that they were punching towards would turn around and close their eyes. And the instructor would say, when you feel like it, just go. So we were feeling for our chi. We're feeling for our energy, feeling for the energy in the room. And I was talking, I was in physics graduate school, and I was talking later to some of my physics graduates' friends and they were, I was describing this whole thing, and they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, because we talk about energy and physics all the time. 
And they, and I said, none of this is true. You know, as you very well know, we understand energy and this and that and the other thing. And, and they were like, you know, all nodding their head. And I said, there's just one problem. And they looked at me and said, what's the problem? I said, I'm really good at it. <laughs> uh, nothing like data to really throw a crimp in your day. <laughs> even as a physicist. So yeah, um, uh, you know, leave the area, defend yourself against it. Um, uh, you know, go, go away. I, I, I don't always find it's bad energy. I, I find somebody that, um, has this energy of being super excited and I'm empathic. It's just one of those things where I take on some of the feelings of people around me. Uh, and, uh, it can be, it can be, that can be really tiring, but then, you know, you get somebody like pounding the keyboards or frantic, you know, and I find myself pressing the button a little harder and I have to go like, okay, no. And, uh, you know, somebody could be, you know, I, I, I sit there at the machine and the big wheel is turning and, uh, on the wheel of fortune, cause I got the spin and somebody next to me is like big money, big money, you know, screaming in my ear. And I'm just like. Uh, and I just like, you know, that's too much. That's too much. And that's all that is negative energy too. And, um, you know, bad energy, that sort of thing. And I, I don't find, I find it doesn't help. Uh, Jane says, uh, been watching the called number board for Oklahoma's bingo slots on YouTube. 75% of the red screen payouts are on the last row of list or first five numbers when the card rolls to a new one. Yeah, there's, there's aspects of how class three machines work. I've been having a couple of cons, uh, consultations with people about the details of that. That's why I need to actually be in front of it because I'm sure I can see it, but people try to explain it to me like you just did uh, uh, somewhat. And uh, I didn't see a question. Um, uh, and, uh, I, I, you know, I, there's something there. There's, there is something there. Um, but I, I need to get to the casino uh, with class two machines. And there's, you know, um, 12 hour trip to Oklahoma, nine hour trip to to uh alabama and I, I just need to have the funds to to get there and stay there for three days um uh, so there's a comment not a question i know someone who uses a finger clicker to count her spins so she doesn't zone out um yeah i have i got a bunch of those to try to find one that would be like small in my hand and there's some golf tools uh to count the number of strokes but some of them don't go over 10 maybe 20 uh but then if you just recycle it i, I was trying to figure out if there was a way that people i could help people um you know count to five for the five spin method and so kind of looked in some of that um but there's not really <laughs> um yeah uh sure um, uh, but then if you're getting to be that tired, maybe go home. Um, yeah. Uh, I see a general question to everybody from Chris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a Star Wars reference. <laughs> um, uh, thank you. That is my favorite character from Star Wars. Uh, thank you for the compliment. Um, so um, I guess I'll answer this. Uh, it was directed to everybody. Uh, Chris says, <clears throat> Does anybody else monitor the session points, tier credits being earned on a machine compared to win losses to determine if the machine is cycling well enough to carry on? Me, 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 me. <laughs> uh, I, it's like um, what we were talking about with the clicker. You know, this keeps my mind occupied. Um, I count the number of credits one, and I know how many credits, you know, I put my bankroll in. I know how many credits that was worth. And then I count the credits earned. 
And when it reaches that number that I originally had in my bankroll, I then look at my balance and is it more than that? In which case I cycled it and made money. I spent the whole amount and made that much back and more. Or maybe it didn't make back all of it, but it was pretty close. And I'm like, first cycle. Uh, and then I just do it again and again and again and again. Um, and maybe I'm cycling my bankrolls, in which case then I decide, well, I'm this trip, I'm here for the money. So that doesn't work for me. But on other times, I'm like, well, I've been so close to that tier level, that next tier level that I want to get that this is perfectly access acceptable. I'll go home with what I came in, but maybe I'll go home with a higher tier level. And so as Magpie 11 has often pointed out, what's your goal for the trip? It can be a different goal each trip. Uh, and But what is your goal for that trip? Yeah. Uh, question from Susan. Hi, Susan. Uh, can a casino hold a progressive jackpot from hitting as an attraction for people to play or is the progressive truly random? Um, the progressive... Okay, so you uh, you are very clear about your language. The progressive jackpot is random up to must hit by, and then it must hit by. That's a type of progressive jackpot that can be on a progressive machine, where the progressive jackpot, there's more than one, uh, many, minor, not usually many, um, major, grand, all of those uh, go up. They change value. Sometimes the lower amounts, lower progressive jackpots are like $50 and $10, and they don't change. And that doesn't make it, a, it's on a progressive machine, but those jackpots aren't progressive jackpots. So on progressive jackpots, there can be three or four. And you might be approaching the must hit buy on one of those progressive jackpots, but not on the other. So whenever you make a bet, you're actually, that bet is being, that money is being applied across all the progressive jackpots, perhaps a little more to the grand and a little less to the major. And so <clears throat> that sort of, um, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, you're not anywhere near the must hit by for a couple of the progressives, but you're, you got your eye on that, that one progressive, which is near. Now, there are progressive slot machines that don't have a must hit by. Some of them say right on it. And then some others have it, but it doesn't say right on it. And then there's others that reach a progressive jackpot amount and stop. And then it, it doesn't go up for months when people are still playing. It stopped being progressive. Uh, so you need to know which type. I have a video on this progressive slot uh, jackpots and i think maybe you've you're using some of the wording from it so that's great um but that's the sort of thing you have to figure out your if, if your casino has this type or that type uh and um uh you know sorry we're good um yeah uh, you need to figure out which which type your casino has sometimes it's really obvious because they just say and other times you have to sort of figure it out um winning progressive jackpots is i call slots enthusiasts who do this as being a um a specialist so i don't mean to like talk over people's head so you understand me and and everybody else is like wow you know you're really into it <laughs> but um uh progressive jackpots also if they're what is it mega bucks you know the, the, these million dollar progressive jackpots the top amount on the machine um uh it is an attraction but they're becoming less and less and less and the reason why they become less and less and less is because the casino doesn't pay that out. It's a collection of casinos in the state that all put money into it. And usually the slot machine manufacturer of that machine is kind of like the one that's holding everybody's money, right? They're administrating the progressive jackpot. And 
you know, if, if you're anything like a lawyer or worked with lawyers, all that sounds like a nightmare. And it is a nightmare. We have multiple owners, including people that don't have, you know, they have that machine, but it was one at somebody else. Everybody has to agree that the payout was valid. And there's no downside to one of those casinos where the wind did not occur to then say, oh, I think there's a problem. I think there's a problem. And then it's eight hours before the, 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 the winner gets their pay or if ever. And then the person, the casino that actually it hit at, and if it's approved, they can advertise. They can say, hey, come see our progressive jackpot. It just hit, you know, for 30 more, for $34 million. And part of the money that casinos get is... Um, and while you're waiting to play, go play other slot machines. Well, um, you know, it's it's just a thing. It's it's something that's um, a way for them to get their money back. Uh, and so that's, but that's becoming less and less and less for the reasons I talked about. Okay. I hope that was enough. Um, <laughs> hi, Joanna. Welcome. Love your last name. Uh, Larry says, uh, what do you mean class one, class two machines? Uh, no, actually, it's class two and class three. Uh, there is at tribal casinos, there are class one. Well, I, I'll, I'll put it this way. Class one machines are tribal ceremonies, uh, dancing and such. And uh, so that you can't make a casino out of that. Uh, but class two machines are um, skill based games where there's some level of skill in, incorporated. Indiana says it's video poker. You know, it's, it's, there's, there's some level of skill, some choice that was made that matters. Uh, and then, uh, so that's usually bingo. Uh, and they make a game out of it called, you know, com, uh, uh, skill, a uh, bingo style slot machines. And they're not slot machines. It's class two. Anyway, they look like it, but they technically aren't because class three they don't say what that is. They say what it isn't. Class three machines are not class two machines and not class one games. It's meant to be everything else. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering how do we look at HHR machines like Kentucky, Virginia? Uh, is that a skill based game? You know, when, when it was a horse race? But this is all after the horse race. And I don't think that you know, it, it becomes difficult. So class two and class three is a way to define um, the type of game. And it falls under two different gaming regulations, which when you talk about strategies matters, knowing what the rules are. If you're not in Oklahoma and you're not in Alabama, you probably don't care. Uh, tribal casinos often usually don't have class two machines because class three machines are what everybody wants. Uh, and um, that's what they have, Michigan, all these different places. But uh, class, uh, uh, but Oklahoma, um, and it's all financial, right? The Oklahoma uh, governor got into a bit of a snit with the tribal casinos and tribal casinos said, you know, you're trying to get more of uh, fees and other costs on class three machines. So we're just going to go with class two machines and, you know, gave a finger gesture or something like that. That's what I meant. Not your problem if you're not in a couple of states. Congratulations on mindset motivation for walking out after winning. Well done. Uh, Beryl, um, uh, uh, once again, everybody, uh, please put a hashtag question uh, as it shows across the bottom of the screen uh, at the front of your comments. So I know that it's a question to me rather than to each of us. Um, and yep, I got your question, Larry. Uh, and now, now with a hashtag question, um, I'm trying to be generous. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, so let's see. Um, 
uh, I'll answer this comment. Uh, love, love, love. Um, I just showed a little bit ago um, in Kentucky uh, how one casino's down there, the other casinos up there. These are all business decisions by the casino. Yeah, yeah. It's it's state data. Uh, Cheryl, uh, hashtag question. Excellent. My local announced 100 million renovation. I feel like they should stay away. What do you think? I think you should go because the bill doesn't arrive to the casino during construction or before construction. They pay that bill when the construction's completed. It's part of the contract. So, I mean, there might be an upfront bit, but they don't have to start payments until they receive the goods, until the building is built. So you're good right up until that's done. And then it's going to be terrible for like a year or two. <laughs> so, um, you know, go cautiously. But my experience has been while the building is going on, it's a great opportunity. They 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 don't have to make payments and 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 so they don't have to pull money uh until they have to make payments and that doesn't happen until it's, the construction's finished no good question uh, another question uh, personally i've noticed up uh, from mindset uh which is today's topic <laughs> uh, personally i've noticed that the chain machines megabucks etc never pay out or rarely hit uh yeah it, it takes a lot to accumulate them uh, they try to um uh you know get people to uh it's a wide area network a network that's greater than just the casino the one casino um and and you know a lot of people have to play it for a while and people were really excited about it oh look i could you know it's like it's worse than pay, playing the lottery, you know, but it's such a big amount that it could be life changing. They talk about these life changing jackpots and it's just become not interesting anymore. And that's part of the reason why there's just less and less common that. And it just the, when they do have a payout is, you know, uh, it, it will if somebody get paid. You know, you could ruin a casino's reputation by the, the mess, you know. It's bad when the casino doesn't, you know, gets a reputation for, wow, it took eight hours before they paid out $34 million as though that's like a surprise. There's, there's, no, there's no upside. There's no upside to somebody winning that except, well, if you're patient, uh, you're going to miss, you know, if you're in Nevada and you're Las Vegas, you're going to miss your flight. But on the other hand, um, you know, you'll get your money eventually. But, you know, will you miss your flight because you had to be there? And it's just like there's no good that comes out of it for the casino. Um, you know, they'll advertise later. Somebody won. Come play because you might too. And it's got to be so much less um of a good thing for them uh that that's shifted time goes by and we change uh daryl uh question penny slot two dollar max bet seems to hit free plays every 40 40 spins if you say so um i'm concerned that free games uh aren't paying out that's what we're that's what we've been seeing all over the place um do you actually win more than you bet yeah. but if you love bonus games go for it <laughs> you know I, I that's what i talk about uh what's your goal are you there to win bonus rounds well then congratulations but if you're there to win money are you you know will it does it and and so you know it, your your goals matter your goals matter uh okay how are we looking uh i think i told a dog story i think i told a cat story uh anybody else have any questions i will give it a second um a few seconds for people to ask uh and and uh and we and we will see where we're at i'll give you a countdown uh 10 Nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, that's it. What a great live stream. You'll see me in the next live, my next live stream on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Last time, 1,700 people visited during the show. Something about that time seems to be working for people. So that was great. Wow. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my Slots IQ membership group, where you get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. The next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include another slots-related topic, a review of the slots industry in Kansas, and another thoroughly enjoyable live stream Q&A session. My apologies for being gone so long. First, I moved to Reno, then sold my home in Ohio without a profit. Surprise! Then I was heavily focused on making Slots Labs a great experience for every participant, which I was successful at doing. Everybody loved it. You will, too, if you get in before registration closes. But I have missed you, dear podcast listener. But I'm back and have something like 50 episodes already planned out. So, yes. So, yes, I'm back at it. And I'll talk to you again soon. Until then, take care. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.